What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Rant Apocalypse Talks, HBO's Westworld. I'm Justin. Hey, I'm Kelly, and we are related, which you will probably really understand after you listen to us for a little bit. If you... A lot of our opinions are similar. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, which is very odd, you know, because I would have thought that maybe we'd have differing opinions but since we are related and it's that whole, you know, I don't want to have the same opinion as yeah. my mom. Uh-huh. Screw her. I'm but rebelling. Then, but then you went, oh, my God, my mom is so cool. Yeah. I want oh. to have an opinion just like hers. She's just such a genius. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to die? <laughs> I do not want to die. I do not want to die a horrible, horrible death like a lot of our hosts did Mm -hmm. in the premiere of Westworld, which is entitled The Original. We're here to give you our top moments from this episode, as well as give you a few questions to ponder before we get to the second episode of Westworld, which we both loved. Spoiler alert for our reviews out of Bacon's. We both love the crap out of this show. It was fantastic. In this premiere episode, we get introduced to the world of Westworld. We get introduced to all the characters of Westworld. We see what's moving and shaking between these characters. Who's the bad guys? Who's the good guys? Yeah, or who we think. Yeah, exactly. Who could be lying to us Mm -hmm. about that they, we think that they're the bad guys, but they're indeed good. Um, So let's kick it off with our number three favorite moment from this episode, which is the saloon shootout. Yeah, no, yeah. That was was super corny, right? Really, really bad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, I feel like I'm I'm that host, not the host. I feel like I'm that human that was a part of the shootout. That's like, oh man, I look know. at me! I got I him. Know. God, he was so lame. Although, yeah, he did kind of save the day. He did sort save of. the day, but uh, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, it was very lame way for Hector's character to go out. Yeah. I thought the whole saloon shootout. It was it was such an awesome thing. You couldn't have a western without a freaking yeah. shootout. Right. So I was so glad that they moved everything up a week. They had to, you know, they had to finagle the timing so that way they could kill a lot of hosts and yeah. that way they could fix them and everything. Right. I loved Armistice, uh, which is. Ingrid Berdahl. I had yeah. to write that down because okay, I did so not the, know her name. The chick that was with Hector. Yeah. She was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yours is much better than my uh, so my guns that I had going on. <laughs> yeah, she was absolutely badass. She had the freaking Mike Tyson face tattoo. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she was incredible. The way that she blew that one dude away that it was had literally already gotten shot. He, he was already dead. The one that was being like, dragged behind yeah. the horse? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like she was uh, shooting at ducks, you know, at the, at the fair. Yeah. The, the little tin ones that keep falling over. That's definitely what it mm-hmm. seemed like. I thought she was awesome. Um, I loved uh, Rodrigo Santoro's mm-hmm. Hector character. I thought he was he was phenomenal. It's so funny to remember that he was Xerxes in 300, and then you see him uh, as a cowboy in this. He, he's a much better cowboy, in my opinion, than he was Xerxes in 300. He was scary. He was scary yeah. as Xerxes. I love Thandie Newton's character. Um, she's kind of like the the madam of right, this right. this uh, you know whore house. Um, she is exactly like the madam of the yeah. whore house. I don't know why you put air quotes around it what? because it okay of the um, of the cat house. Uh, uh, yes, I think that's the the lady of the night house. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, back in the old west, it was a whore house. Yeah, it was a whore house. I, I love when she blew that other host's face mm-hmm. off, and it just like I went know everywhere. it peeled back in a, yeah or, it, yeah it was that was awesome it was it was it was really really awesome thank you jonathan nolan lisa joy for including a saloon shootout yes. in the pilot of hbo's westworld all right our number two moment was the double fake out first we think uh, teddy is human and then we find out he's a host first we think the man in black is a host and he turns out to be a human so Actually, that was like a quadruple I know. fake out. I, can, I can't even count yeah, all the numbers of yeah. fake outs that we got there. Especially when, you know, we, we go to uh, see Teddy protect his lady love and her family. And, well, actually, her family's dead. Just her. Keep her from yeah. being raped and, and possibly murdered uh, by the man in black. And, and he's totally impotent. He, cannot do, he can't do anything. He, he 
points the gun at him. We think that he's going to be the winner. He, we think he's going to shoot that host, and it and it flip flopped on us. That was brilliant. It it was. It was very a uh, very crazy turn of events, especially if you watch the 1973 version of mm -hmm. Westworld where the man in black was the villain of mm -hmm. the movie. It's Yul Brynner. He's just mowing people down in the movie, and killing was, all the humans. Yeah, he was an android that was pissed off. He yes. wasn't going to take it anymore. Um, yeah. I do love, too, that in that movie, you know, we got the whole face pulling off thing, uh -huh. and you see all the gears. Well, that can't happen in this. I mean, they're that when you shoot them, they bleed. I mean, it's it's they're fleshy. Yeah, whenever so. they get killed, it's it's it looks like a human being is getting killed. So we talk about the double fake out, and we talked about who's the villain, who's the good good guy. Mm -hmm. So do you think the man in black will actually turn out to be the hero of the story? Because when I think about his character. And I think about everything else that's been going on. I don't know if you saw it, but this the sequel to Westworld, which was entitled... <laughs> no, I did not watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of people did, that's for damn sure. But the, the sequel is entitled Future World. And the coolest part about Future World is the fact that um, it's not like Westworld where we've got all these androids and robots that... They're they're there to service all of our desires so and every whim. You. Yeah, they're there to do that. Mm -hmm. But the larger storyline is the fact that they're replacing all of the major political leaders, the major entertainment people, with these robots. Because oh, I would love to live in that world. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, the political. It's, it, it would be good for us because ain't nobody caring about us. Right. Like we're <laughs> they're mm -hmm. like. Uh, we don't think we we don't need you guys. They're you not know? even yeah. great podcasters. Yeah, exactly. Leave them where they are. Exactly. Um, they've only got like a thousand subscribers on YouTube. They're <laughs> they're, no they're nothing. Whoop. They're no they're nobodies. Uh, but yeah. So my thinking is is what if Jeffrey Wright's character of Bernard is actually the villain? And this is something I've thought about that maybe the park's creators and everything mm -hmm. are actually hosts themselves. And we see the man in black's character, he's trying to get to the to the heart of this. Right. He he realizes that maybe this is like some spiritual successor to not only Westworld but Future World as well. And like all of you know, in the outside world, all of the the political leaders, all of the the major movers and shakers Have are already, been already replaced. Yeah, are already hosts, mm -hmm. and the man in black knows this, and he's got to get to the heart of this. Mm -hmm. So it's something to think about. Like maybe everything that we see is not what we see at face value, and there's more than meets the eye to which, the characters of meet the, or the man in the black. Right, and which is, I mean, I'm assuming that, that they are going to lead us astray as much as they possibly can. I, and I do kind of feel like I, I have a hard time thinking of Bernard as a bad guy. Yes. But because he seems just so good and, and, you know, just like a really sweet man. I kind of feel like the man in black, although he's a, a rapey asshole. Uh, <laughs> yes, so that's going to that's going to be hard to get around for to suddenly go. Oh, no, he's the good guy. He's yeah, really he's the, the good, good guy. guy. You know, no. he's going to have his black hat. He's going to take it off. and He's going to put on the white hat. Yeah. And, oh, OK. But <laughs> yeah, uh, no. I mean, so far, he's he's kind of he's kind of a jerk. But if if androids have gone out and replaced everybody in the rest of the world, I can, I yeah. can see why he'd be a little pissed off and rapey. Yeah, I can, I I can mean, definitely see that. Not the rapey part, not the rapey part. Yeah, the, 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 the rapey part I can't really see, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to think about. I know that there's a theory floating around that maybe Bernard is doing all of this because he actually had a child before. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't catch this, but apparently Bernard has some picture that he was taking a look at and it looked like there was supposedly a young boy on this picture mm -hmm. and there's a conversation that Ford and him have about the fact that humanity has gone as far as it can go that we're done now and who knows maybe we will actually resurrect the dead okay. and I'm very curious to find out more 
about Bernard's character. I feel like he has got this huge role to play. He has that conversation with Peter Abernathy at the end. And for all we know, he may be building a ginormous army of defective hosts Mm -hmm. that actually aren't defective. Like he hasn't actually fixed them down there. He's just maybe programmed them to temporarily shut off right now. But then with the flip of the switch, they're ready to take over the entire park and the world. Yes. um, Will they put on clothes before they come out of cold storage? No. No, no. Okay. So wieners flopping (laughs) everywhere. Boobies Boobies, flopping everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. If somebody comes at you butt naked wanting to fight you, I, I'm it's, gonna back off. Hard. It was, and it's mm-hmm. it's hard to. It, you're like, what am I gonna touch? Expected. Where do I grab? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Put your I, hands I, back. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get beat up a lot easier. So <laughs> that's true. I think I think it's a very good strategy. Yeah. So our uh, our number one moment from this episode was at the very end. Whenever Dolores, she's had the conversation with Stubbs. She's had the conversations with Bernard. You know, they're they're basically analyzing her to make sure that these reveries are not causing her to still be defective, that she's not remembering Mm -hmm. um, all of the past atrocities that have happened to her in her host life. And she just says, no, I'm so great. This world is so wonderful. I I only see the good in this world. Yeah, and then she swats the shit out of that fly at the end, and you're like... Yeah, you're not supposed to be able to do that. I mean, uh, Bernard makes it a a point when he... Is it Lee that he's telling? Um... I, I can't remember who he tells it to, but that host yeah. can't even hurt a fly. Yeah. And they make sure and show a lot of flies crawling around and yeah. no one bothers to get them out of their eyeball or whatever. It was um, really so. gross whenever it happened to James Marsden's character. Yeah, it, was, it, it bothered me. Eye. I know, it bothered me a lot because I love him so much and I, I want... I. I want to humanize him, you know. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, I know you do. Like, you definitely is that want what to you kids call them. it these days? <laughs> yeah. Humanizing. I'm about to go humanize them. <laughs> but, could know, be. Could be. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that from now on. I think you need a shirt that says, I'm about to humanize your ass. <laughs> that could be a good one. I think so. Um, so what do you give the Westworld pilot out of Bacon's? Oh, this was definitely a five bacon pilot which doesn't happen very often i mean no. pilots a lot in my experience and i've been around for a while i've watched a oh, lot yeah. of tv uh <laughs> they usually suck balls so yeah mm-hmm. yeah they they do a very uh, good description of sucking of the balls <laughs> um, of many many tv shows yeah no a lot of pilots we watch a lot of tv shows um we, lo- we watch a lot of good tv shows yeah. i mean this is what everybody says is the golden age of television right now. I mean, and um, it's, right. it's, I, I certainly think so. I used to be a huge film lover, and to me, the best stories are on TV now. Not to say that there's not still good movies out there, but they're just farther and fewer between mm-hmm. nowadays. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Five Bacons, absolutely, for the Westworld pilot. I thought it was glorious. I thought they built this fabulous world that I just want to live in for 20, 30, 50 episodes out of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, I want a video game of Westworld now. I want books of Westworld now. And that could very easily happen. How many of those, and I'm looking at my shelves of Walking Dead stuff when I say that, uh, how many of those characters are we going to have? They'll be everywhere. We're going to have them all, all in our rooms. Yeah, oh, it would, it's it's going to be glorious. I will say, if you're if you're a, a fan of Westworld and and you want to live in that world, I think the closest that we uh, as humans can get to living in that world right now is a video game called Red Dead Redemption. Um, I think it's it's well, I don't think I know it's a fantastic game. It's a little bit older. Red um, Dead Redemption. I need a new game. Yeah, it's don't it's tell me fan- it's Xbox only. No, it's it's on. PlayStation as well as Xbox, but it's PS3 and Xbox 360. Well, PS4, it's not backwards compatible. That's okay. So, I kept my PS3 just for that kind of stuff. Well, there you go. If you have an Xbox One, it is backwards compatible for Xbox One. It's glorious. And if you're into zombies, it's even better because there's a Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare version. You know, Grand Th- people always say Grand Theft Auto, and that's the obvious comparison mm-hmm. to me is because, you know, you can do anything and everything in the world of Grand Theft Auto. But in Red Dead Redemption, you're actually, you know, the setting is the Wild West. So 
um, I would highly recommend that. And yeah, so setting, characters, mysteries, I'm in. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to find out what the hell, you know, the scalp was. What's no. that maze? Yeah. Um, it reminded me so much of something from Lost because J.J. Abrams is involved. Right. And I'm just like, you sneaky bastard. Yeah. You're, you got something that people are going to be like, what the hell is this mystery? So, And is he um, going to tie it in somehow with Lost? Could be. You never, you never know with Lost. <laughs> um, you never, ever know. So we want to know your thoughts on the pilot of Westworld. Put them all in the comment box down below. Let us know your bacon score. Let us know what you're most excited for. Do you think the man in black is the ultimate bad mm -hmm. guy? What do you think Bernard is hiding? Mm -hmm. We want to know all those thoughts. You can also check out our podcast. It is Westworld Rants. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or at rantpocalypse.com. I'll put a link in the description below as well. Definitely go check that out. That's our longer, you know, <laughs> really, long, really long, long, long. Yeah. Lots of lots of thoughts mm -hmm. on the uh, the pilot of Westworld. It was glorious. So we're very excited to cover the show each and every week right here at Rant Apocalypse on YouTube. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye. Bye. Did you say? Thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. You did say that. Yeah, right? like yeah, the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And subscribe yeah. and all that. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, They're my, my, my thumbs up are as bad as my guns. <laughs> that, actually, that's, I'm not a crook. That's what that looks like. I look like Richard Nixon.